Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Using My Will to Love in the World presentation, Jesus and Mary encourage us to apply what we have learned from the Developing My Will to Love group of the Education and Love series and to see the opportunities to use our will to love in day-to-day -day life. Recorded on the 27th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Interesting song, that. <laughs> How many of you are waiting for your real life to begin? rather than constructing your real life. <laughs> Bit of a problem. Okay. Well, come to the end. Or the beginning. Certainly the end of today's discussions. Anyway. So I want to talk to you just in the end because I want to talk to you about using your will to love in the world. Right at the beginning, remember, if you cast your mind back at, to the beginning talk that we gave on that sat Saturday morning, you remember we talked about God's definition of love versus the world's definition of love. Remember that? And we talked about the need to receive our education from a higher source because the, source that the sources of education that are available in the world that we live in are generally not higher than our own condition. And so we need to receive education from another source. Now, obviously, if I use my will to receive this education from a higher source and receive this education in what real love really is, my own condition will improve. If my own condition improves, then that means my condition of love will be better than the general condition of love in the world. So if you really loved other people, what would you then do with that condition? Surely you would share it, wouldn't you, in the world? Now, one thing I like about this world is there's lots and lots of opportunities to share love. There are just so many. Like, it's almost limitless how many opportunities there are to share love in the world we live in. So if I'm developing my will to love and then using it in the world, you will actually create so many different things that are not now existing on the planet to share your love with the world. There's, there's literally businesses and empires of businesses that you could create to share love in the world. Not that you might receive a lot of money from creating them, but, but you will probably find that you may. Because, because these particular things, can, as they're shared, people will appreciate the sharing of them. They will express their gratitude for the sharing of them. And this is where I see there's not much faith either. There's not much faith that if we get into a better condition and we begin to engage some of these processes of sharing some of these things that we could create in the world, sharing more love in the world, using our will, in engaging it in the world, then what, what will happen is things will markedly change for us and the world itself. That, that's your opportunity you have huge opportunities ahead of you if you have a condition of love that's higher than the condition of the world. Now, most of you haven't been looking at it that way. Most of you have been looking at it as if, if you grow in love, the world will attack you and the world will abuse you and the world will make your life more difficult and the world's going to you know, just pull you down and denigrate you and you're going to be disapproved of and you, you're going to, you know, people are going to be, treat you terribly and your family won't like you anymore and your friends won't like you anymore. You lose everything. And you, you've got all these negative things going on in, you, in your minds, all coming from the past all coming from these unhealed emotional states, all coming from the doubt and disillusionment that exists within you. 
and, and you're imply, implying that if you can't get into a better condition and start doing some of these more positive things in the world, that actually things are not going to work out well for you at all. And, and completely the opposite is the case. Because you'll be living in harmony with God's laws. And any person who lives in with harmony with God's laws bears the benefit of doing so. Right? So what I see is like the world is here in terms of its condition of love. Right? God's love is infinitely greater than that. But let's say you receive just a smidgen, just a little bit of God's love, and you happen to be at this level of love. And then in that process, you decide to use your will to create some things, to create maybe a business that shares something with the world in, because you can see the world needs this particular thing and so you create a business to do it. Uh, so, and many of you are thinking in boxes still because, because you're limited by the fears and, and, and your lack of action and, and also the lack of truth and the lack of love and the lack of faith in your life. But imagine if you remove these boxes, that, which are like prisons, they're like bars that guard your prison, you know, your own prison actually, and, and you remove them. Now you have the freedom to grow a whole heap of things that don't exist in the world. Now, for some of you, that'll be technological things. For some of you, it'll be scientific things. For some of you, it'll be medical things. For some of you, it'll be practical things, like helping other people in different ways. For some of you, it'll be even just with day-to-day -day life. For some of you, it'll be building things. And for some of you, it'll be li living things. And, and for some, you know, you, I could list a whole heap of endeavours that all would be in a higher condition of love. And you could choose to engage these processes in the world, right? You could. And why don't you? Isn't it just those fears, the lack of faith, the desire to not act because you're afraid of what might happen? Isn't it just your fear that you know, people may attack you or harm you or abuse you? Isn't it your fear of being first? Isn't it your fear, those fears that are stopping you from taking these particular actions? So if you have received some of this education in love and you get to be in a different condition of love, like you have a large number of potential things you could choose to do. Some of you will author books. Some of you will produce videos. Some of you will, you know, like I said, build buildings. Some of you will design a different way of living, a different lifestyle. Some of you will design different technology. Some, some of you will do all sorts of things. But, but it depends upon your development in love as to how those things will come about and how you'll engage them. Now... You know what most people want to do when they start connecting with some kind of spiritual philosophy? You know what they do? They create a group. Right? And that particular group, like it might be a religious group or it might be some kind of environmental group or whatever it is, but, but all of them are really religious or religions in a way. They're all groups and we create a group and then all the people of that particular group all get together and they spend time with each other and, and very rarely do they share what they do with anybody else. And if it's a religious group, they have very strict guidelines as to how they should share and they have certain judgments of other people and so forth that prevent them from sharing what they know or what the resources are with the world. So if it's a Christian religious group, they might not share it with a Muslim group. Or if it's a Hindu group, it might not share it with a Buddhist group. And if, it's a, if it happens to be a, you know, a group that doesn't believe in abortion, then it won't share it with the people who've had abortions and, and, and so forth. And so we end up with all these groups, all with what we would classify as special interest groups that, that have some benefit in the world because they're all trying to do some good. But, but because of their judgments and their unwillingness to address their unhealed emotional states and their fear and their unwillingness to engage God's truth and their unwillingness to have faith in God's goodness and their unwillingness to take action, of course, it just ends up being much the same as what we've already got in the world. You have an opportunity to change that. 
You have an opportunity to actually engage a whole new philosophy where you're willing to help everyone in the world, no matter what their background and their situation. And the only time that you stop interacting with people in the world is because they're being unloving to you and or to others. That's the only time you withdraw from them. The rest of the time, you do whatever you can to share these things that you learn with the world in all sorts of ways. And some of you don't recognize you have passions in different directions yet, but once you recognize those passions and directions, you'll realize that there's a whole slew of things that you can do to share what you know with the world. Instead of just living your own current mundane, to be frank, life, Right? You can do a whole heap of things in the world. But to do that, you're going to have to learn to be brave and courageous. To do that, you're going to have to exercise your will like other people don't. You're going to have to choose to do something different than the average person does in order to do that. But that's, that's your opportunity. Music, art, technology... There's, areas, uh, there's unexplored areas of discovery that we haven't even discovered as a human race and you could be a person who leads that discovery because you're open to hearing from spirits and other people who know about those particular things. Right? There's a whole, like I'm saying, the, the opportunities are like immense. But, but we have to want to do it in the world rather than just create our own little group where we all just sit together in our own safety, in our own comfort, you know, in our own comfort, and, and we just talk to each other and we don't share with anything with anybody else. We don't create something that benefits the world there. All we do is we become another group. See? Now a person who, who truly loves doesn't do that. That's why every time you've tried to make me do that, I've resisted doing it. Right? Every time you want me to set up a group and lead a group, I have eventually pulled the pin on that. <laughs> right? Because we need, what we do needs to benefit the whole world. Doesn't it? It does. Not only the whole world of humankind on earth, but also the world of spirits who are also earthbound and also the world of spirits that are in the hells of the spirit world. All of them need to be benefited by what we do. And we could choose to take actions that do that if we use our will to love in the world. All right. So I've almost said enough about that subject, don't you think? Mary, you'd like to say? You want to come down with me? <coughs> Mary arrived today for the Hi, <laughs> people who... <laughs> it's lovely to see you guys, and um, I'm really glad that I made it for the last day. <laughs> I was just thinking as Jesus was talking about all these extraordinary things that we will end up doing when we do use our will to love, um, that, that, that feels like the point to me that when we do choose to use our will to love, we will do extraordinary things. It's not, it's not a choice to, oh, I think I'll do something extraordinary. The choice to use our will to love results in amazing things in the world. And I was reflecting, just last month in Australia, um, they announced the Australian of the Year. And there's an Australian of the Year, and there's a bunch of awards that they give. And there's Young Australians of the Year as well. Do, we're mainly Australians. Do you guys know who was awarded the Australian of the Year? Uh, his name is actually eluding me at the moment. Um, <laughs> but he is, and surprisingly, perhaps for some of you, someone that I see has used his will to love in the world. A few years ago, he was actually the head of the Australian military. However, a huge thing happened where he discovered that a bunch of guys in the military had been circulating really uh, sexually explicit and horrible things, I think, about other women in the military. And um, he went on YouTube he made a public address to the camera and he said, basically, you guys, 
this is out of line. Women deserve our respect and you are not honouring or respecting anyone here. And um, he also called upon everyone else within his organisation and he said, the standard that you walk by is the standard that you accept. So he called people, he used his will to actually confront a huge area of injury and a lack of love within an organisation which I can't comment on, you know, there's many issues of love within the military as it currently is, and I can't really even comment on his personal spiritual condition, but he, it is an example of where he used his will quite forcefully, and he said very forcefully to these guys, you guys, if you can't cop this, you need to get out, you know, this, it's not on. Uh, he made a stand for, for, he was very truthful, I suppose, and he used his will to confront a lack of love. And so I see that, you know, we're talking here about divine truth and all of these amazing things that you'll do, but really when you just engage your will to love other people, you might not go out there and share divine truth initially, you, you'll just begin to confront areas in the world that are not loving. And the other example was the Young Australians of the Year. Who, who's heard about them? Yeah? The, these guys are best mates. So they gave it to two guys. And what they have done is they started up a service on their own. I think it's a not-for-profit now, an organisation. But basically, they've got a van. And what they do is they go around and they have washing machines in the back of their van. And they pull up in these areas where homeless people live. And one day of the week, all the homeless people get to wash their clothes for free. And they wash them and dry them and they can go away with a clean set of clothes. Which is such a beautiful thing if you think about how lovely it is to feel clean and feel your clean clothes on you. And these guys thought this up and created it. And they're young guys. I, I, again, I don't know their age, but they seem to be in their early 20s, maybe even younger. And it's now become a huge thing. But to me, that's another example where people have seen a lack of love. They've empathised with other people and decided to use their will very constructively and passionately in order to give love to other people. Mm. So I was just thinking about that as you were speaking because I think a lot of people go, oh, yes, oh, and I've got to be in this spiritual condition and I'm going to share divine truth and I'll be an example of being at one with God when really what I'm feeling more and more is the more that I just simply decide to engage my will to love from wherever I'm at, immediately I begin to confront the lack of love around me. And that has rewards not only for me but for everyone else around me. Mm. So, just thought to add that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? There's nothing you say. <laughs> 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 so this is the opportunity we feel you have you have the opportunity right now to choose to do do things that are loving and you have the opportunity also to gain an education and develop your will to gain an education in real love as well so you have the opportunity to do both things and the question becomes really am i going to do that what am I going to, am I going to put that as a fairly high priority in my life? Can you imagine your joy when, if, if something you finish up doing, like those young guys, finishes up working? <laughs> You'd be quite happy when you're about the end result. But it, let's say it doesn't work. Don't, you wouldn't then give up, would you? <clears throat> I've been teaching publicly divine truth now for um, a little over 10 years. And, and there's probably five to ten people who understand it right, in the whole world. And hopefully this week you've got a bit more of an understanding of it, right? <laughs> hopefully that's what's happened. But, but if you think about that, if, if, I decided to, if I decided to measure it based on how everybody else responded to it, can you see you could easily give up, couldn't you? So this is the other thing you need to learn about developing your will to love and actually exercising it in the world. There are times, it's going, there are times that it's going to be a slow process. 
because because the world's in the condition it's in at times it takes it, it takes a long period of time before they realize that what you're teaching or what you're sharing or what you're doing with them is actually the best course of action it may take many years right so so don't be put off by how long it takes do it because your will desires to do it don't be influenced by other people and their projections at you it's your will that determines the outcome of these particular events does that make sense <coughs> so what we'd like to do is encourage you to go out into the world and use your will to love and hopefully the last week has helped you consider what that means and what that's potentially going to involve and the personal development that might be required to do those particular things yeah i feel like you guys uh, arriving today i just felt really emotional like about your bums on the seat you know <laughs> you've already used your will to get your bum on the seat for the whole week <laughs> and um i feel that's really special but it is just the very very small use of your will to to begin to learn you want want to learn more about this and the, i think as you said last time the real challenge happens when you walk out the door and what you're going to do with the information yeah. yeah yeah it's easy to be in an environment where you're removed from your day-to-day -day life and to contemplate matters of very deep importance to your future life it's quite a lot more difficult than to go back to your day-to-day -day life and still you know maintain the momentum of of what you've learned and that is going to depend on will. your will isn't your will wonderful <laughs> everything depends on it it's so good <laughs> doesn't depend on your whole life doesn't depend on anything else other than your will actually i think that's such a wonderful thing yeah so we basically come to our conclusion of our presentation to you last week and hopefully you've enjoyed yourself or if you're not enjoyed yourself you've at least learnt something <laughs> <laughs> has he done an amazing job yeah. <laughs> that's embarrassing <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, feel it. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> Have I gone red? <laughs> You're so tan. No one can. No tell. one can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fortunate thing. Yeah. What we'd like to do though is just spend the next ten minutes or so just thanking a few people who have helped make the event possible, and uh, we'd probably like to start where it. It, where it started uh, we after we had the idea of doing it myself and Mary and um, we uh, um, approached Raj and Sue so we'd like to thank you guys where are you guys at there the moment are. there they are yep. um, they. thanks for find, finding our venue for us it's been yeah. a lovely been venue a lovely hasn't venue, it yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a lovely venue yeah yeah and and actually it's quite it's very functional for what we need really much more functional than the last venue we had. <laughs> um, then uh, we would also like to thank um, the guys who did the music for us, Kate and, and Fab. Have you, have you given them their, their thanks? Huh? Okay. Were, they <laughs> were they also awesome? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'd like to thank them. Um, we're also going to thank the venue. We've already done that, so uh, we've thanked the venue on your behalf. I spoke at the venue uh, when I arrived today, and they said you've just been a lovely group. Mm -hmm. They said if all of our customers were like you guys, life would be a breeze. They'd be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nice, isn't yeah. it? We'd like to thank uh, Cornelius, who's stood up here with me. Now it's his turn to go red. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, feel it. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, the, uh, it, it's a difficult job what he's doing actually. You, you'll see the results of it in the video, but um, it's quite hard, particularly when he's got to move around and, and he's got to be on the ball all the time. And he's got to stand up and be quite still as well, which obviously, you know, in five hours or six hours at a time is quite difficult. So um, it's... A, and Corny will only be doing it this group and the next group and one more. And then, then we are looking for a videographer after that because he's got other desire-based passions, desire -based passions <laughs> with the, that he's exercised his will to engage that involve uh, his true passions and so he's going to go off and start doing some of those and that's going to mean that we need somebody else to take over there so there's a position open. <laughs> it, it pays really well. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Although I must, I must say, um, thank you for your donations, and I'm sure Corny has appreciated your donations as well. So, so it, it has it has actually paid something because <laughs> you've donated to his efforts. So that's wonderful. We'd like to thank um, Lena and Igor. Um, Yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone uh, personally, um, first of all, donating to uh, AJ and Mary, and secondly to us, to me and Lena. Uh, it means a lot to us, so thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> these, these guys put in so much effort. Uh, yeah, we've, so much. we've had months of preparation, yeah. and there's been a lot of technical preparation as well because we've had a lot of new equipment we've had to sort out and so forth and I've had a fairly fairly hard last couple of months actually in preparing a lot of stuff we've had a very solid work uh, besides doing our normal recording we've had very solid work sorting out um, all of the mess that I create at home um, uh, yeah, no, with technology technological brilliance <laughs> that generates stuff. So I produce yeah. all this stuff and then we've got to put it somewhere and uh, and the guys have uh, spent a lot of their time sorting through a lot of the stuff that we need for our technological gear. Since the studio is finished, Lena and Igor have had a huge uh, kind of increase of involvement in our lives because they come to work at the studio and they're very involved in it and Lena does an awful lot as well in outside terms of, of that outside of even just the videoing she handles our office inquiries she does a lot of cataloging of frequently asked questions she does massive massive amount of service uh, from our lena yep. and uh, <laughs> he's getting embarrassed now too but she's not going red like i did I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fail, fail. Yeah. <laughs> It's the fear drain everything yeah. out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but these guys have really, really um, given us a lot of time and effort in the last six months. And also because they've spent a lot more time with us, it's meant they've got triggered more as well emotionally, and so they've had more to deal with uh, emotionally as well. Um, so there's so there's things happening in that regard as well that's uh, affecting their life quite a lot. So they're not only having all this emotional upheaval, but also all this work uh, to do. So yeah, we definitely would like to thank them for that. We've been enabled to get a lot of backup uh, equipment. Have you noticed we have actually six uh, cameras shooting, or seven actually cameras shooting at the moment? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. cameras shooting at the moment. And, um, and some of that equipment came from Peter and Eloisa. And, and in fact, um, they gave us a recent donation which enabled us to actually go out and purchase a whole heap of equipment that means that if we, if one of our current pieces of equipment break down, within a half an hour we can replace it with another piece of equipment, which means that your life wouldn't be interrupted by our breakdowns. So before what was happening is if we had a breakdown, we would have to actually cancel the event. And we were concerned, many of you coming from overseas and so forth, we were concerned that you know if we had to if we had a breakdown and we had to cancel an event halfway through there's quite a lot of funds that you've spent to get here and so forth and the funds you've spent on accommodation and we were pretty concerned about you know that as an issue of love and and their donation to us enabled us to buy a whole spare set of equipment uh, along with a way to store it in in boxes and so forth and and this enables us 
to actually deliver these particular talks without any interruption. So we'd like to thank you guys for, for that. And I want to thank you some more <laughs> for stepping in because I'm sure you've shared with the group some big things came up for me right before we were due to start mm. and mm. was very um, special for me that um, my soul <laughs> just went, you deal, it's fine, I'll handle it. And as I'm sure you're aware, uh, it's a lot that he's a lot of work and um, so I really thank you honey and no I know yeah. I asked them all to look after me at the start <laughs> good <laughs> I nearly sent that as a directive and, and I did say it to someone who was coming I them, said you look after him and don't most you? of them bar a couple of people which I'll have to address later yeah. um, have not ha ha who haven't have looked after me. <laughs> so they're, they're, most of you have looked after me, so, yeah, so, so, so it's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Some of you have been projecting quite uh, difficult emotions at me for the whole time, and I'll be having a chat with you afterwards. So I need to have a chat with Josh and with Rita afterwards, thanks. Um, but, but I feel the rest of you have dealt with me pretty well. So, so let's uh, so that thank you for that. Yes. It's also made my life a bit easier because I've been talking six hours, uh, to five to six hours every day. And uh, it's great that you haven't, uh, on my off time, haven't uh, tried to engage me very much because that's meant that I've had the energy to give you the time when I'm on my on time. Does that make sense? When you talk five to six hours every day in front of a group of people, it, it, it does uh, take a fair bit of your energy. So, so thank you for looking after me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Hannah. <honey. laughs> Um, I'd like to also thank you guys for your response this week. Um, I feel, I feel, you know, we, we were a bit concerned about how you might engage things, and and I feel your engagement this week has been quite quite good, on a lot of levels actually. Your your engagement, firstly, in the interactions of the Q and A, has been very good, but 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 also your engagement with regard to. Um, you know things like the mi microphones and things like that taking you know doing something what's happened with the microphones have been on rotation i know and, it and, and it's been and seamless beautiful. and beautiful yeah. yeah and we'd like to thank you for doing all of that that's that's really been really good for us and um and and i also like to thank you for you know the personal emotional engagement that you've had during during the um, presentations instead of detuning there was only that one day or so in the middle there when we were talking about the resistances that there was a bit of detunement that went on but but for the most part the majority of you have stayed in tune with what's being said and been sincere and, and engaging the process so I think that's wonderful that you've done that the key like I said now is to carry that into into your life in a practical way day-to-day -day way so yeah I'd like to thank you for that um, is there anyone else I've forgotten Ru? Ru? Oh, yes. Ru? Yeah. I can't say Ru? your name Ru? <laughs> where is, is he there he is, is. Uh, just for he um, kindly offered to uh, coordinate share accommodation for everyone I'm not sure how many people took that up but that was a lovely gift um, that he took the initiative to do that and yeah. we didn't have anything to do with it and it's a lovely yeah, offer so good on you mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> He didn't get embarrassed. He did a little. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't go red. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, we, we hope to get the uh, video of this out, of course, at some point. And, and that'll probably be, we've got another, we've got a five day break and then we're into another six day, uh, well, eight day presentation period as well which is exactly the same group done over again and as you probably know it's probably not going to be exactly the same <laughs> um, but that's the way it works out we decided to do the two back to back because we had full full bookings for these first two at least and um, so what so what we'll probably be doing is getting uh, we hope to get the production of the videos out within the following three weeks but obviously that means quite a lot of work there's uh, 60 at this stage we estimate there'll be 64 to 68 hours of editing 
and usually it's a four to one thing with regard to the editing so uh, or at least a three to one time so that's 180 hours to 200 hours of work and and you know to do that in, a cup in three weeks is going to be like working five or six days a week so that's what Lena and Eagle will be, be doing when they get back home and we're going to leave them alone and not push them around too much in the in that process so they can just focus on their job and um, we we've decided we're not going to unpack um, the material, material and set up the studio again because there's only a for, for us there's only um, that that three week period which we need to obviously not record in and then there's only a five week period before we have to pack up the van again and come back so so we've decided to actually leave that five week period I need four weeks to prepare the next group um, and we'll probably myself and Mary will probably do that together but we're not sure about that yet depends on how what how Mary goes processing what she's doing so it might end up just myself preparing it and and so what what we've decided to do is to not do any more presentations in between time so that so that we can get everything ready for the next group does that make sense but if you are bored and you are looking for further input, you'll be able to watch the second group, which will be different, yeah. and that will help you solidify all the lessons ready for... The, who's coming to the next group? How many? Uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah, three portion. quarters, yep, yeah. yep. And yeah. obviously the guys are working really hard to edit that stuff and get it up on YouTube within three weeks so that people who haven't been here Kay. but are coming to the next group can watch it before they come to the next group because that's a prerequisite. Of yeah. the next group. Yeah, so there, there's quite a lot of effort. We then, we then, as I said to you uh, during the week, we then send the material to the USA, where we have a, a person, Eugene, who connects it to his server for me, and I then get into his server and upload that material to my server in Canada, and then I upload from my server in Canada to to everyone in the world who has a disk that downloads, and also to YouTube. And, and that process, we think, will probably take three to potentially four weeks. So it'll take us three to four weeks to get the material out, and then after then we hope the material will be out. And, and then we'll have, uh, obviously, it's 64 hours of material. It's going to be, um, there's not much point putting other material up, probably, because there's a lot to, to watch there. Um, we, we may still do a little bit of channeling and stuff like that, but, but I doubt whether we're going to get to video it because we, we really don't want to unpack most of the gear. So it'll be just recording, audio recordings only in that period. And then we'll be back here um, in early, um, well, for us it's early May. Uh, we have a five day setup period, which takes us a couple of days to set up the room. And uh, then we have a day or two off before we start into the next series. Of, of of discussions so um, that's where we're headed with this and and so what uh, the reason why I'm telling you all that is because we won't be doing uh, any more video output in that short period of time but after the second group we will be we will we'll be repacking re-establishing re our our uh, studio and starting to do a more presentations in our studio after that point in time Alan you'd like to ask I'd like to thank Mary for her fabulous mediumship, which is just so helpful. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, that's my pleasure. Absolutely, I just felt so. Those spirits were so inspiring, weren't they? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just incredible gift that they wanted to give and. They came to me and said, no, nah, we were going to do some other mediumship. They're like, no, we want to we want to share this message for all these people coming to these groups. And I said, oh, I don't know if I'm up to it. I'm not good enough. Oh. Um, and uh, but I, I got through that, yeah. sat down and did it. And and um, I myself have rewatched Sonia's message a few times because I just feel there's so much there um, mm. for all of us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Including myself. Yeah, we've referred to that quite frequently during the Have you? Yeah, yeah. during the yeah. presentations. Yeah. So um Angela. Um I was just gonna ask if you had heard from Sonia over the week. <laughs> I've been kind of in my in my yeah. zone, yeah. Just trying to focus on my own stuff and yeah. Um I felt it just when I just 
uh, this afternoon. It's a lot of um, lovely spirits here. Mm. Just really. Um, I feel you've given them opportunity to, yes. in this group far better than you gave them an opportunity to group two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the group two years ago was was really badly influenced by some quite dark spirits because of your resistances. Whereas the group this time, I felt much more positive spirit influence in this group, um, and and a lot. It's a lot easier to address you as a result as well. So, so that's a good sign that there must be a growing sincere desire in the majority of you. Um, otherwise, that wouldn't have occurred. So that's really good. Barbara? I felt Sonia downplayed the significance for me anyway regarding her having a desire for God on earth and the difference it made for her in the spirit life compared to the other spirits that came forward. Mm -hmm. And that was very encouraging for me. Mm. Yeah, mm. But she actually downplayed it, and to me that was one of the beauties of the message. Yeah, yeah I don't know if she downplayed it. I feel that she, um, she was more concerned about what was going on for you guys than for her life. And a person who truly loves someone doesn't always have to share about their life. Um, and she was also she also felt that the three spirits that they brought the group of spirits it was not just Sonia she was their spokesperson, but the group of spirits who were involved the celestial spirits involved wanted you to meet the three spirits who had very similar problems and issues that the men and women in this group actually and the and the next group actually have, and so it was great that uh, I feel they did it in the way they did yeah mm. yeah. And did you <coughs> notice also she highlighted the, um, I feel that perhaps she could have said more, I felt more from her about the issue that many people have which is about um, blame, denial, avoidance of their own capacity to choose to desire God while on earth. Um, she, she was trying to say that a lot of people resent and feel like, oh, it's easier for people who've got that instead of honouring that those people who do desire God on earth are using their will uh, uh, lovingly. Mm. Yeah. Does that mm. make sense to everyone, what I'm mm. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. People who honour God on earth are the people who recognise or at least even begin to recognise that there has to be a higher source of education than what we currently have on earth which is which humility is, isn't it yeah. which is one of the biggest things you can recognize because if you keep allowing yourself to be educated by the earth and the people on the earth rather than having this higher education like things are not going to turn out any different so so i feel that it's a big lesson to learn there really and that is choice you know there are people from all sorts of background who finish up making that choice it's not dependent upon what's happened to you it depends on what you desire or choose to do and 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 this particularly the case in the western world mm. particularly the case you have so many opportunities to to you know learn things that are beyond the scope of your environment in the western world in comparison to other parts of the world yeah. Look at us in this beautiful air-conditioned paradise, yeah. Yeah. having the time to sit and just hear about this yeah. beautiful gift of our will. So there are many people in the world, if they had to do this for eight days, they'd be starving to death by the end of it, or dying from no water by the end of it. You know, so you know we've got to appreciate what we have and take the opportunities that are available to us. Because without people in the Western world changing, it's highly unlikely the world's going to change. Because we have a severe negative impact on the rest of the world. Yeah. So we we need to make these changes. Yeah. But that's different from now us pointing that out and you guys guilting yourself and bashing yourself into trying to change your will because that doesn't work. Yeah. Hey? No, you've learned you know, that. You've learned you, you got that from the week. Didn't yeah. You? Yeah, that's it. That, I think. <laughs> if they, I thought you probably pointed that out. <laughs> yeah, if, if if they if they haven't learned it, then they've been deaf the whole week, <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> yeah. You guys have been in such good hands. <laughs> anyway, we'd like to. Uh, we think that it would be nice to get a photo of all of you. How would you like that? Yeah. Yeah. So after we finish today, what, what we'd like is, uh, have you determined where, Eagle, you'd like to... 
you want to try up the front here because it's not outside there's cars and you know, it's all it's a bit messy outside um, so we might try to do it up here and probably what we'll do is four layers we'll have a stand up layer up the back and then the second stand up layer of the shorter people in front of those and then we'll have a sit down layer and then there needs to be sort of like a squat down or, or so like a kneel down like a kneel a down or a sit on floor okay. layer and a like a so there'll be four <laughs> layers <laughs> <coughs> don't listen to her she's <laughs> misleading you um, I'm all mischievous because I just came I feel awesome so you know. <laughs> At the, at the centrepiece. No, we'll do that at home. With the, don't, with don't the ballet hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, sorry, what no, you they, yeah. no, they didn't hear what I said, yeah. so just yeah. leave that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so it, basically I think there's uh, 60 something of us, so it'll mean about, I think it's 18 people in each layer. Um, so we can do it in orderly fashion if we have 18 chairs and a bit of an arc and we'll have to move the front chairs back a bit and uh, what if we bring and and take yeah. some shots centrally perhaps um, so if we organize that straight after we finish then you've all got a shot uh, by the way if you don't want to be in the shot it'll be on the net so if you don't want to be in the shot that's fine don't have to be in the shot um, but <laughs> but if you do want to be in the shot then <laughs> this is where you're going to have to be. Uh, we will have 18 chairs and then we have two layers of people standing behind those chairs and one group of people oh, sitting in front of those chairs. Does that make sense? And one group of people sitting on the chairs. And, uh, and maybe if you just leave two of those chairs in the middle for me, or one of them, well, I don't know if you want to be, you want to be in it? Yeah, you want to be. Right. Two of those chairs in the middle for <laughs> us to be in, that would be great. Yeah. So that's how, how we do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah, the reality is we, we spend a lot of time together preparing this material for you, as you can imagine. Guys, um, I love this material so much. Yeah. And I was just at home trying to learn it better myself. But, you know, it's yeah. such a beautiful thing, our will, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I love One of the most important it. things to know yeah. about your life really because yeah. it's that first gift god gave you yeah. the first very first gift you've really been given besides life itself is is your will how, how to what you're going to do with it because it got, isn't it wonderful that we have such a lovely parent who who gives us life and then gives us the gift to do anything we want with it like when did our parents do that for us you know it's like <laughs> rule here rule there rule there no can't do this can't do that no god just allows you to do anything you want with it and and how you determine how you use your will has a great effect not only on your future life but also on the lives of others mm -hmm. so it's just it's just wonderful principles that we've discussed i feel yeah okay christine um i just want to say how much more clarity that this week has um, done for me mm. personally and um, what you said about it's okay to make a mistake yeah um, because I've condemned myself really badly every time I make a mistake and yeah. so therefore I feel God's condemning me yeah I've almost wanted to hide myself from God yeah and trying to have a relationship with God and yet hiding myself because you're because worried about that. your mistakes yeah um, it just meant a lot to me yeah thank you yeah my pleasure i have said that many times before but but it's funny isn't it we get to a point where we're sort of ready for something to hear something sometimes don't we and when i say ready often that is also a choice like many of you have come i feel with the heartfelt desire to do something different because you've had enough of the same and that's already a choice that you've exercised your will to love in so that, that's really good. And because of so, uh, the, the developing openness that you have, you are going to finish up absorbing more as a result. That, that's an automatic consequence of that developing openness. So keep developing that openness. It's wonderful. Yeah, Karina, thanks. Um, I'd like to share how much I appreciated the all, it was so perfect, just the timing, the presentation, mm -hmm. the outlines, the days off, the 10.30 mm. next day, 11 the next day. I mean, 
It was just flawless. I, I, mm. I don't know if you had amazing celestial help, but <laughs> it was so. No, right. we gave it a lot of thought in terms of. Yeah. We gave it a lot of thought in terms of what would be comfortable for you guys in terms of uh, in terms of your absorption and overwhelm. You know, yeah, of longer information. day, shorter day, day off. Longer yes, day. Yeah, yeah. and we purposely also placed sort of the bit harder material on the first day to address because you know that you know that gives you a night of contemplation, able to ask questions the next day and so forth. So yeah, we, we developed the program specifically to enable a lot, in what we hoped was a more loving way than last time, to not, uh, but, but would uh, give you more ability to be able to reflect and absorb the information as well. So, and, and I'm quite happy with the format that we've chosen mm -hmm. this time, and I'm glad you guys feel the same. I can't think of a way of making it more effective without, um, you know, you, you can go too long sometimes, and you, you, or it can be too short. Mm -hmm. And you can see with the material that we're trying to present, um, I think six days of actual presentations is the ideal because it's it gives us a chance to absorb what's being presented without it finishing up at the end. We're just so overwhelmed, we can't remember any of it, type of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'm glad it's been it's worked, but we did spend a lot of time to mm. to prepare it, it that way. Just so perfect. Mm. And you are awesome. Yeah, thank yeah. thanks for that. <laughs> thank you. Um, Just on, you know, the absorbing and the openness. I know you want to change the subject. <laughs> um, that you've got these outlines that we did. A lot of that stuff wasn't covered directly, but if, if you read the outlines before you came, you were here engaged and you go away and you reread them, I guarantee you're going to get more from it. The mm. more you just keep looking at it, opening up more, feeling about it, it'll keep compounding the gift, if you like, mm. and, and that will stand you in good stead, obviously, for mm. life, mm. but also for the next group and all things, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing is that some of these outlines will actually change. Um, I, I will be editing them uh, over the next few weeks to get a final copy, you know, uh, out to you. Um, so, you know, we did a first draft outline with some modifications uh, afterwards, and then, and then we thought, well, after the group, we might want to modify them just a little bit more, just to incorporate some of the things that we did mention in the group. And so, I'll be doing that. Um, during the time that the guys will be editing and so by the time the video comes out you will also probably have some modified outlines on the net as well on the website. Obviously we had to limit the length of the outline because there's a limited amount of time to talk but mm. there's a lot more that we can add into each mm. outline. Mm. Yeah. But yeah I feel the hour discussion with a 10 minute break is definitely better isn't it oh, i think you you're not sitting there busting and <laughs> concentrating on your bladder rather than you <laughs> and the information and not zo it's harder to zone out you, you stay a bit more on ball and i think that kind of format is probably what we're going to do from any most of the presentations we do from now on most of the presentations we do from now on though will be assistance groups only um, because they are quite uh, taxing to prepare for us um, and, be, and we want to do those other projects I mentioned to you, the CLIPS and, and FAQ projects, and that, you know, that, that means spending some time in the studio. So, so it, these will probably be the main public appearances that we have you know, over the next two years, really, just these groups. I think we struggle to fit more than that in mm, because mm. there's such a prep time, yeah. afterwards time. But it also means that there will be approximately 190 hours of video after the groups this year um, and another 190 hours of video after the groups next year um, in addition to the stuff that we will normally produce during that period of time. So, so there's quite a lot of material that will end up making its way on the net. And we're hoping that this <coughs> material will be like a library to help new people to help people grasp the basic principles of, of, of God's way and, and also engage their will to, to practice it. 
and that's why we developed the course not so it's not just for you it's for all the people who can't make it yeah. and we would like to thank again those people who donated to the event who who knew they wouldn't be able to make it but they donated to make the event happen yeah so we like to, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's wonderful that people are not just thinking, you know, selfishly, but rather thinking of the benefit, the, the worldwide benefit that these particular events can bring. Mm. So that's what we're glad about too. Thanks, Renee. I'm imagining that when um, I start to use my will, I'm going to, like, progress from this little dodgem car that I'm just getting <laughs> absolutely <laughs> hammered around into, like, um, like... Oh, maybe like a V8 Mustang or something. Like in <laughs> and or I've a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah. Or a Ferrari they, or a... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I know, hey. <laughs> and I got my hands on the steering wheel and I know where the accelerator is and... Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, and this is a, a probably a good way to look at your life, isn't it? To see that your life is a lot more under your control than what most of you believe. And most of the control that you're exercising is in resistance to life. It's in resistance to growth. Yeah. And, and you've got to let go of the resistance to growth and engage the positive outcomes that, that can be there with regard to growth. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel for many of you, you've, you've heard divine truth and become frightened to grow. And, and that's an indication of some of these underlying fears that exist. You're also lack of faith in God and in God's goodness and things like that. You've, it's almost like I've seen many of you before I met you or just at the time I met you, you were engaging many things in your life that now you're not engaging because you've become afraid of making mistakes and afraid of getting it wrong and afraid of sinning and afraid of all these different things. And, and it's affected your will sometimes quite negatively. And hopefully this group has been um, able to help you reverse some of that and, and start to see the positive benefits of exercising your will, even if you make mistakes and even if you do something that's wrong that you have to correct. You know? So that, that's hopefully the benefit of the group too, Sherry. I was just wondering what the, or if there are any prerequisite skills that you need to be the videographer? Um, yeah, you need to not be influenced by spirits very much, <laughs> for a start. We notice a lot of people get so involved in the material that they forget that they're actually videoing. You need to be quite switched on with service um, in terms of wanting to serve other people and also doing your best to get the best possible shots because... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, if you stand up, that's it, <laughs> then we can see it. Um, but y you, you, you start to see what other people don't think of, just like Corny experienced there. Like, you know, you think, <laughs> what can you do? One thing you can do to help him is stand up, uh, which we actually mentioned at the beginning, remember? Um, so, and, and it also helps the, the people who are watching because they then see th each audience member who's asking the question, you know, it still remains engaging even if the audience are, uh, are giving up. So there's quite a lot involved. But in terms of technically, it, it, there's not much involved. It's just a Zoom thing and, a, a, and the aim, aim thing, you know. <laughs> That's all you do. So it's not, not that difficult. But, but to do it to Igor's satisfaction... <laughs> <laughs> you need to have some practice. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to not panic as well when you can't get the shot and go... <laughs> you know, because that's really bad. <laughs> yeah. That's really unusual. And you've got to be able to stand for five or six hours straight, obviously, um, without very much movement sometimes. And, uh, you know, some, some physically can't handle that. So, yeah, there's quite, it's, it's quite a lot involved in that regard, but it's not much from a technical perspective. And the key is to try to get the best possible shot you can. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yep. So, yep. Unfortunately, because we're not having any other event till the next event, it means that probably the person that we're going to educate with regard to it is going to need to actually do it in situ, making their mistakes as they go. Mm. Um, or even we might set up a, third, a, a, a seventh camera 
and have one person, like while Corny's doing it, another person almost next to him giving it a go, do you know what I mean? They're seeing whether they can get the shot as well. And, and that way you get a bit of practice and you get somebody in your ear telling you this is how you do something. Yeah. Alan? I'm um, just wondering how you felt, how the, our spirit brothers and sisters are going that came and listened to the group. Yeah, at times we had quite a lot of uh, different types of spirits come, uh, besides our celestial friends who were trying to help you stay in the right zone. And, and, and you would have noticed that at different times. Yep, yep. <coughs> And, and they, uh, you know, as always, uh, benefit greatly when they're ready to hear the information, just like yourselves. They benefit greatly from actually understanding that the exercise of their will is how they're going to get out of the hells. So there's a group of spirits who are in the hells who, who came. There were also, I don't know if you noticed them, but there's a group of six fear spirits came who, when we were talking about them. And... Uh, and they, of course, were concerned about what I'm saying about immortality, uh, because that's obviously one something that's a question that's on their mind frequently. And so they came to listen to that particular discussion, and now they're having further discussions with our celestial friends, so that's good. So th there's always these groups always have a benefit to spirits as well as people here. One time in the future, what I would like to be able to do is engage those spirits. Um, throughout some, something like this as well. But to do that requires, um, and if, in the end I would like to see th them able to materialise and engage. Um, awesome. Yeah, but, but to do that requires quite a lot of change in our condition before, yeah. you know, when I say our collective condition, before that will occur. Yeah. Mm, yeah. We had intended, if Mary was here, to actually do some channeling while we were here, and that will definitely happen in the future if Mary is around, but, but basically it's not much good me doing any channeling for you because there's no one to have the discussion between it, so, so, um, so it's better if Mary's here and I can talk with the spirit that Mary is channeling um, as a way of teaching. And so in the future we hope to engage that process and in fact we were hoping that some of your group feedback would be f from them rather than from us. But in the future that might be the case. Yeah. It's really awesome isn't it, the channelling, because you are being able to observe what happens when somebody does engage their will to grow. That's why you will find it so powerful isn't it? Yeah, mm. and so it's kind of, if you think about that now, when you watch the mediumship, when Jesus is helping a spirit, I think yeah, this is an example of someone engaging their will, being real, being humble, um, and making progress. How am I not doing that? You know, mm. how 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 is this similar or dissimilar to the way I behave in relation to growth? Mm. Mm. There's a lot that you can learn from it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we, and we enjoy doing it because it's easy for us to do. It's not, like I said to you before during the week, you know, preparing to do mediumship uh, is like a five minute thing uh, on the average, uh, whereas preparing to do a lot of the other things that we do take many, many hours. Every one of these presentations that we gave to you this week took around four times the time to to prepare as it takes to deliver. And if it was just Myself, I wouldn't have prepared them. I would have just stood up. just stood up here and done them. But but I'm very conscious of the fact that you guys will need some material to go away with, and you'll need some reflection. And you want you. It'd be great if you can engage me rather than taking notes, and if they can become your notes. So I'm very conscious of all those things. So yeah, that's you, why we've done it that way. Yeah. Um, also, might mention that you you have a. A longer range uh, vision, as many of you have noticed, than than many of us, and also it's your desire that these, you know, there's a timetable, there's an outline for the last group, there's even powerpoints. If somebody in the future reaches a condition where they are ready to present this material, then it's ready to go for them. It's it's a gift for the future, really, for mm. somebody somebody else. So. Having the having the process replicatable. Mm. is very important to me so yeah. yep bruce um could i ask a question about channelings um will you 
do you or do you get the opportunity to go back and get an update like with Glenn and and the guy who got shot? Um, I haven't actually listened to all of it because it got a yeah. bit hairy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, do you get an opportunity to go back and talk? We to we do. Um, sometimes though, it happens when we're not recording. So. So we get to hear it, but you guys don't. Um, we did recently, remember, with um, uh, Anthony. Anthony. With Anthony we yep. did, yeah. Yep. Um, we, try, we try to do it where we can, but it's not always convenient in terms of the timing for us to actually record it. So that, that's an issue. Uh, one of the things we're now doing is trying to keep um, audio stuff in our house <laughs> so, that, so that when we've got you know, spirit there and we haven't got the video going, that we can still get a re at least an audio recording of what's going on. Yeah, it'd be really good. So, yeah, so we're trying to do that, but oftentimes I slip up with that or something, and so you've missed out on some excellent channelings as a result, <laughs> um, and uh, which is unfortunate because some of them would have been very appropriate for some of you. But, but yeah, it's just one, like we just enjoy doing it, so sometimes we forget to... <laughs> We forget to record it, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's happening at the time. It's, if a person could be around um, around what all of the channeling that we've ever done, uh, you'd have a lot more faith than you currently have. Yeah, because because there's a whole library of material that we've never recorded um, that you've missed out on, obviously. And this is one reason why we're trying now to do our best. Use and to use technology to record a lot of this material for you, so that way it gives you the chance to to share in the experiences of other people and what what's happened to them in a much more a much better way, and rather than us just relating to you an experience that has no you know real feeling in you that it generates. This way, we what finishes up happening is we 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 give you the opportunity to have them tell their story to you, which is, which is much better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we feel actually in the long run too that, that uh, we should have thousands of people doing that and, and recording every one of them. Like, imagine that. Imagine, imagine all these different people coming from spirit world, truthfully telling their experience, truthfully related. Like at the moment, most mediums don't get a truthful record of the experience because the spirits are so concerned about the people on earth that all they do is focus their attention on the person on earth or they just want to tell the person on earth a whole heap of untruth because they, they want the person on earth to believe things are better than they are or whatever. And, and it needs people who can determine truth and feel the truth who channel this material. And if, imagine if we had a great, like a thousand people doing it. I would love to see that. Mm -hmm. We had a thousand people, a thousand couples, all filming and recording the each each interaction with a spirit, and then it goes into a library of of spirit interactions, discussions of what actually happened. And imagine if you had that kind of a resource available to you. You know, there'd be after that experience, there'd be a lot more evidence about there being a spirit world. And there'd be a lot more evidence about what happens in the spirit world and so forth. And this would cause a lot of people to ponder more and think more about their, you know, their Earth-based experience. Because at the moment, the main problem on Earth is that we're so keyed up to avoid pain and we believe there's no other life other than the life on Earth that causes us to feel that pain is the primary motivator, you know, the primary thing to avoid, without considering the full long-term consequences of our choices and decisions. And if you have all this library of spirit information, it gives you the ability to determine what's happened in the future, right? So, uh, uh, sorry, what will happen in your future is what I mean. Um, if, you can, if you continue a certain type of behavior or a certain type of action, and you be able to relate to somebody who's done that, and what was the result for them, and that can help you learn from other people's mistakes. So, so this is a great way of teaching people as well. So it'd be wonderful to have that at some point in the future. But it does require quite a lot of, of emotional development and sincere desire to help people without being involved in, with the money. And most mediums are concerned about the money and concerned about the, uh, you know, some popularity or notoriety. And, uh, and these kind of motivations are not, not good for doing the kind of thing we do. So, but it'd be wonderful if we had that happening in the future, wouldn't it?
big library of that, be great. Anyway, guys, we could go on all night, as you know, <laughs> but it's time probably to finish. And uh, if after we finish, you could, we could just, we'll just rearrange things here a little bit first, and then we'll bring up, uh, because we've got to wheel out the, uh, we'll have to wheel out the, Whiteboard's up the aisle probably, um, and we'll rearrange a little thing a bit, bit first, and then maybe if you could just stay out in the uh, concourse area there for a bit, and we can just call you back in. Oh yeah, name tags, if you could place your name tags when you finish up the back, uh, we will be using those same envelopes for, for we just replace the units, uh, and for the next group, so it'd be great if you could leave, make sure you leave them here for us, and then we don't have to go and buy a whole heap more. Um, and I think that's all I need to mention, I think. No, take, take, them, take off. them off for the photo, yeah. 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 We don't need people to point you out. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy your life. <laughs> 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 uh,